endurance, the ability to ride further, faster and longer. Yes, yeah, something the majority of us cyclists are trying to build on, whether that's ticking off your first century or going for a long, epic ride. Endurance is the key to opening those doors. So in this video, we're gonna give you some advice on how to train your endurance with limited time, and it involves a lot of this. Three, two, one, go, up! The advice given to many new cyclists looking to build their endurance and build their base miles is to go out and do long, slow, steady miles. I mean, the great, the legend, Eddie Merckx, who used to say himself, ride your bike, ride your bike, and ride your bike. Ride your bike. And this advice works. It has a direct effect on the physiological adaptations that underpin our fitness. Long, slow endurance rides have been proven to increase blood volume, red blood cell count, and mitochondrial density in muscle tissue. They also make your heart stronger and more efficient. And put simply, it helps the oxygen we breathe turn into energy, and it has been proven for years. Yeah, but for us mere mortals who don't have hours and hours to train on their bikes, we can still build those adaptations, but without the big quantity of training. The short answer is yes. There has been a lot of research in recent years testing a vast majority of athletes and amateurs using lots of different training plans and those results have been pretty surprising. One training plan that was used widely was polarised training. So what is polarised training, I hear you ask? Polarised training basically divides high intensity training and lower intensity training and it misses the tempo zone. So you spend 80% of your training in its aerobic zone, so level two, and then 20% it's a very, very high intensity. Polarised training is used by some pros who often train up to five hours per day. But how does it work if you're only doing five hours per week? So let's break it down. With five hours training time, you're looking to spend up to an hour at very high intensity, with the other four spent recovering. This could be done with a couple of hit sessions in your week with short intervals, and one longer steady ride of about two to three hours with some sprints thrown in. Try four times 30 second sprints in your long ride with lots of recovery, and then try and add one or two more in each week, up to a maximum of around 10. Think of it as pushing and pulling. All that slow, easy riding is slowly pushing your endurance upwards. Whereas the high intensity is like coming from above, pulling your ceiling up higher. So in time, your endurance will improve even if you can't train 30 hours a week like the pros. That is polarized training. So now we know it's possible to train endurance with a limited time. How does this look practically? Well, first of all, we need to plan our sessions. We need to maximize the time we have and make every minute count. But that's just one aspect. High intensity workout puts a lot of strain on the body. So we need to space out our high intensity workouts so our bodies recover. A typical high intensity workout could be something like 10 by 30 second max sprints with more than two minutes rest in between each set. Or you could take a different approach using blocks of high intensity. Try 20 second max sprinting, then 40 second recovery for four straight minutes. Then take 10 minutes rest before repeating that four minute block. You shouldn't need to do more than three of these blocks to get a great session in. Right, my rest is nearly up. Time to go again. These are best done twice a week, but you are going to need at least one day of recovery in between because they're pretty savage. These intensities, they're not easy, but the rest of the week, you can keep it it's your aerobic capacity. And that is between 50% and 70% of your maximum heart rate. So you can go and enjoy it. 
it's worth saying that these intervals can be done outside or inside, on the flat or on the climbs. I've got to say, I like doing them on the climbs. They help you keep up the intensity, also encourage building muscle, but I guess most importantly, helps get your climbing ability just that little bit better. Boy, it's hard. Nearly ah, there. Come on. But if you are really stuck on time, the indoor trainer is a great option. If your bike is already set up, you can be ready and on your bike within minutes. Another great thing about the indoor trainer is that if you do have intervals, you can just get your head down and go hell for leather with no distractions. You don't have to worry about cars or traffic. You can just get on with your session. Then when it comes to the moderate intensity rides, you can head outside in a group and really make the most of that social aspect. So the answer to our question is a resounding yes. If you implement intervals and high intensity training into your schedule, it is gonna benefit your endurance and your overall fitness. But there is no doubt that the longer rides and the base miles are gonna give you some benefits too. Yeah, for example, if you're looking to do a long 100 mile ride, you wanna be comfortable on your bike as well. So being comfortable on your saddle and with your handlebar position. These long rides are also a great opportunity to test out your fueling correctly. Yeah, after all, fueling is one of the biggest contributors to uh, endurance rides and longer rides for that matter too. But I guess, and we'll save that for yeah, another, that's another video. Yeah, fish. Right, if you enjoyed this video, then you know what to do, hit that thumbs up button. And uh, let us know in the comment section below if you've got any tips and tricks for uh, enduring endurance rides. And we'll see you in the next video. Are you ready, Manon? Because this weather's coming in. I might just stay here for a bit. Yeah, uh, well, um, I'll leave you to it. And uh, I'll see you in the next video, Manon. You might want your bike, Hank. Oh, shoot. <laughs>